When we own a stock of a company, or more completely said, a common stock of a company, we are an equity holder of that company, so we own, we have ownership of a small part of that company, um, and with that comes a voting right, typically, <clears throat> to elect the board of, to have a vote in the say of the board of directors of the company, and also to vote on other things, such as share splits or the company strategy. But for most companies that are very large, there are millions or hundreds of thousands of shares outstanding for that company and our one vote or our votes that come with our limited number of shares typically as a small shareholder um, don't have a lot of necessarily won't have a lot of impact uh, on that company unless we vote the same way as others do and there's one particular direction that everyone votes in but overall typically when we own a stock we're counting on our gains to come through and the value of that stock to be determined by largely what the company decides um, and the strategy that that company takes with very limited influence from any individual shareholder. And so therefore we're counting on, our return comes in the form of two things. One, the dividends that we receive and two, the capital appreciation of, of that company. And one of the valuation measures that looks specifically uh, at the dividends is the dividend discount model. And the dividend discount model um, assumes that, that, co that the company that we buy a share of, um, that we as a shareholder will over time as that company develops, if we keep the shares into perpetuity, we will basically have uh, a right of the dividends of the company and we will receive those dividends. So in order to assess the value of the, of the stock that we own today, one, a, a way of calculating what the value of that stock is, is to calculate what the dividends would be uh, over the life of the company um, going forward. Much like um, if we put money into a bank account, we will receive payments periodically, and therefore the, with those payments we can figure out what our return is uh, on that bank account, and we can figure out in a similar way, based on expected dividends, what the return might be for a company based on its dividends. So what the dividend discount model aims to do is it aims to figure out what the expected dividends are going forward to that company based on the dividend history of that company, and it aims to predict those into the future and discount them using an appropriate discount factor um, and discount them to today in order to assess a value for that company. The dividends are projected by analysts or, or by uh, portfolio managers who make the investment decisions and we can um, ha also have a look at what dividends have been paid out and what uh, the dividend policy of the company has been. Uh, the dividends are typically a reflection or a related to the earnings of the company and the company has two things that it can do with its earnings. It can either retain them within the company um, and thereby uh, retain them within the company and keep them on the balance sheet as earnings or it can pay them out in the form of dividends. So the dividend discount model looks at the dividends that we would receive into the future of a company and discount them. Um, and discounting means uh, bringing them back from their future value uh, of a dividend for example received in a year or two is not the same as receiving a dividend today and bringing them back using a discount factor which reflects the risk of those, that company and its dividends and the risk that we might not receive those dividends um, and bringing them back to today and adjusting for the time value. Um, and that calculation um, is best done on a piece of paper or, or it's sh certainly shown in the book. But basically we try to take an interest rate that reflects the risk of getting those dividends, meaning it's a get risk interest rate that, that's in excess of the risk-free rate of a government bond or, a, or what's considered a no-risk um, payment, i.e. a government bond. Um, and then adds to it a certain risk premium that reflects the riskiness of that company's dividends. Um, that would give a percentage and then we take that percentage and we use it to bring back all the future dividends and sometimes in a simplified form to bring back those future dividends to calculate a value for the company based on its future dividends today.